This video presents the results from a study performed at the University of Wyoming on the sustainability of rural steel and concrete bridges. My name is Michael Barker. I'm a professor of civil and architectural engineering and construction management at the University of Wyoming, and the students shown here participated in the study. The objectives of the study were to look at the life cycle sustainability from cradle to grave of two nearly identical, functionally equivalent two-lane bridges from Whitman County, Washington. The steel bridge, the Celtus Warner Bridge, was built in 2020. It is 35 foot 8 inches long. It is a modular steel bridge with seven rolled beams and a corrugated gravel deck. The concrete bridge, the Thornton Depot Bridge, was built in 2019, is 34 foot long, and it's made up of precast, pre stressed beams where there's eight beams that make up the concrete deck. Both bridges were built by the county crew from Whitman County. Here's pictures of the two bridges, the steel bridge on the left, the concrete bridge on the right. And to look at the life cycle, we considered the superstructure and the construction of the superstructure, maintenance and demolition of the two bridges. The analysis considers only the superstructure, so we can compare the bridges pretty much side by side. Both bridges were assumed to last 75 years. The prefabricated bridges and installation equipment and costs were considered. For maintenance, it was assumed that both bridges had an identical maintenance where there was none for the first 25 years and then yearly maintenance for the last 50 years of the bridge cycle. For demolition, the equipment and cost were estimated to be different for the two bridges. The process to look at the life cycle sustainability was first to establish the criteria and the benchmarks to measure sustainability. For instance, greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumption, recycling and waste stream metrics were considered for the life cycle of the bridge, which of course included life cycle costs. To establish the criteria, internationally recognized sustainability systems were considered. For instance, here on the left shows the lead rating system and on the right the Envision credit list. From these criteria, from these two documents, sustainability criteria were developed that were directly applicable to rural steel and concrete bridges. And those were emissions, energy consumption, recyclability and waste management, and life cycle costs. For emissions and energy consumption benchmarks, of course, the superstructure materials and fabrication of those prefabricated bridges were considered, along with the construction equipment to install those bridges. Following that, during the life cycle, there's maintenance equipment and demolition equipment to complete the life cycle. For recyclability and waste management benchmarks, of course, the use of recycled materials is important, but really the recovery of recycled materials during demolition. How much material is recycled and how much material must be sent to the landfill. For the life cycle cost benchmarks, of course, we start with the life expectancy of the project, and then we develop the life cycle, which includes the initial cost, but also the maintenance cost for those 50 years, and the demolition and salvage and landfill costs, and bring those back to a present value life cycle cost for comparison. To consider emissions and the energy consumed for the two bridges, the fabricated material and component emissions and energy consumption metrics come from what's called environmental product declarations, where they consider extraction and manufacturing and fabrication of these bridge components. For equipment emissions and energy consumption metrics, an analysis was performed to determine amount of emissions and amount of energy consumed per hour of running the equipment. And from these metrics, we can determine total emissions and total energy consumed for the two bridges. On top here is the Celtus Steel Warner Bridge, and on the bottom is the Concrete Thornton Depot Bridge. To determine the totals for emissions and energy consumed, the weights of the components of the bridges are multiplied by the emissions and energy metrics to determine a total for the prefabricated bridges. In addition to that, there are emissions and energy consumed during the construction of the bridge, during the maintenance, and during the demolition. And these three tables show the emissions and the energy consumed during construction, maintenance, and demolition. These tables show emissions and energy consumption for the two bridges. 
It's broken down into the superstructure, construction, maintenance, demolition, and on the right side, of course, a total. On the top here is emissions, and on the bottom is energy consumption. And these are the first results we see from the comparison of these two bridges. We see that concrete has 47.5% more emissions for the superstructure. For construction, we see the concrete bridge also has more emissions simply due to the increased use of equipment. For maintenance, we assume that the maintenance was identical between the two bridges, so those were the same. For demolition, again, it takes more equipment and more time to demolish a concrete bridge than a steel bridge, so there are more emissions associated with a concrete bridge. And for the total, we see that the concrete bridge has 26.3% more emissions over the life cycle than the steel bridge. Energy consumption is very similar, where concrete has 12.4% more energy consumed for the superstructure, more for the construction, the maintenance again is the same, a little bit more for the demolition, and for the total, the concrete bridge has 8.7% more energy consumed than the steel bridge. And so this is the first result, that the steel bridge has sustainability advantages. For recycling surplus and landfill, when these bridges are demolished, some of the material will be recycled and some will be sent to a landfill. For steel, 98% of the steel is recycled at a surplus of $100 per ton. For this study, 80% of the concrete was assumed to be recycled, but instead of a surplus, there is actually a cost to recycle concrete of $4.10 per ton. But that is less than what it takes to send it to the landfill because landfill costs are $75 per ton. These tables show the percent and tonnage of steel and concrete that is either recycled or sent to the landfill, and the surplus costs that are received for the recycling or the cost for recycling, and of course the costs for sending the material to the landfill. Having these costs, we can determine a present value cost for each bridge using an Office of Management and Budget discount rate of 1.7%. There are three tables for each bridge. The top left shows the bridge itself for the prefabricated bridge, the labor, the equipment, and the materials to build that bridge. And then, of course, we have below that the maintenance and to the right the demolition. We bring these costs back to a present value cost for the direct comparison. So here are the results for the life cycle costs where we show the steel and the concrete bridge. It is broken down into the superstructure itself and then total initial where that includes the cost for construction present value of the maintenance, present value for demolition, and of course on the right side the total life cycle costs. And we see here again steel has lower initial and life cycle costs, where for the superstructure itself the concrete bridge costs 28.3% more. For the total initial cost putting the bridge in place it's 24.7% higher. Maintenance is the same because the same maintenance schedule was assumed for both bridges. And of course, for demolition, it costs more to demolish the concrete bridge, and there is no surplus from recycling the material. For total life cycle costs, the concrete bridge has 23.3% higher life cycle costs. So the summary and conclusions are as follows. The results of the steel, Celtus Warner, and the concrete Thornton Depot bridges are for the installed bridge, concrete had 42% more emissions. Concrete also had 12% more energy consumed. For the life cycle, concrete had 26% more emissions, and concrete had 8.7% more energy consumed. When we look at costs, concrete had 28% more prefabricated bridge costs, concrete had 25% more installed initial costs, and concrete had 23% more life cycle costs. Now these results are only for these two functionally equivalent bridges as an example. Further studies are certainly encouraged with a larger bridge database so that we can look at an overall picture of sustainability of rural steel and concrete bridges. I want to thank Mark Story and Dean Cornelison from Whitman County for the two bridges and for the information on the two bridges. We also had an oversight committee for this research effort from the American Iron and Steel Institute. I would like to thank Mark Timmons and Dan Snyder, and also from the University of Wyoming, Tony Denzer and Bill Bellamy. Again, my name is Michael Barker from the University of Wyoming, and I want to thank you for watching this presentation.